long past time for the truth to be revealed, and it's both more horrifying than we imagined, and more heartwarming than should be possible. There's a reason for everything, including Young Jun's behavior for the past nine years. He's been tragically misunderstood, but there's a good reason for that too, as we learn that everything he's done his whole life has been for one goal, to protect the heart of one innocent little girl. Episode 11 recap Sung Yun learns from his mother that he wasn't actually kidnapped. He ends up at Young Jun's company event in a daze, and he sits next to Miso and asks if his memory is wrong. She doesn't answer, because the magic act on stage sends her into a flashback, and she suddenly remembers everything. She recalls being locked up with Young Jun, seeing their kidnapper hang herself, and Young Jun telling her that it's just a spider hanging from the ceiling. She passes out cold, and Young Jun rushes over to cradle her in his arms. Misa remembers more of the day of her kidnapping while she's unconscious. She wakes up in the middle of the night and, confused, she goes looking for her mother, who's in the hospital. She sees a woman and follows her, thinking she might be mom, and the woman, calling herself auntie, promises to take her to her mother. Instead, auntie leads Miso to the house where she's already got young Jun tied up, telling her they'll go see mommy in the morning. Young Jun introduces himself as Lee Sung Hyun, which Miso misunderstands as Sung Yun, and he calls her an idiot. She asks him what dying means, having heard her father say her mother might be dying. He lies that he doesn't know, so she says that Pil Nam told her it means she won't see mommy anymore. He snaps that that's obvious, and little Misa starts to cry at the thought of never seeing mommy again. Young Jun tries to stifle her wails but they attract auntie's attention, and she tells them in a flat voice to be quiet because daddy will be home soon. Young Jun cringes when Misa whines that her dad is at the hospital. Auntie yells that he's at the office and tells them to wait here with mommy, obviously deep in a psychotic episode. Young Jun gives Miso a caramel to calm her down and make her stop crying, and it works. She smiles, and he crinkles his nose at her adorably, but they both grow frightened again when they look up to see Auntie standing in the doorway holding a pair of wickedly sharp scissors. Eventually they fall asleep, and later Auntie wakes Young Jun and tells him not to wake his little sister. Playing along, he promises to be quiet until dad comes home, but she croons that dad isn't coming, because I'm not your mom. I gave everything to that man, but he didn't feel the same way. I even killed the baby in my womb for him. I'm sure he's sleeping soundly with a daughter and son like you too. Why am I the only one suffering? Why? She shrieks that her only crime was loving him, and she wonders if he'd feel guilty if she dies. She looks at young June sadly and says, let's go together. I don't want to go alone. You two are coming with me, and she starts to wrap her rope around Mieso's neck. Young Jun yells at her to forget that coward and start over begging her to let them go. Auntie whispers that it's too late, but she stops trying to tie up Miso, and she actually looks sane for one brief moment as she thanks Young Jun for comforting her. She walks to the next room and climbs onto a chair, and as Young Jun screams for her to let them go first, she apologizes for not returning the favor and ends her life. When it's all over, Young Jun tries to crawl to safety, but he's barely able to move for the cable ties around his wrists and ankles. Miso wakes, and he tells her not to come any closer, but she sees Auntie's feet hanging from the ceiling and grows scared. Young Jun thinks to himself that with her mother about to die, he can't let this be Mieso's first experience with death, so he tells her that's not Auntie, just a big spider, and closes the door. Misa whines that her feet hurt, she's also been cable tied, so Young Jun bravely drags himself under Auntie's body to get the scissors. At one point his fear overwhelms him, and he cries out to Miso. When he hears her voice, he tells himself that he's okay because Miso is with him. He gets the scissors and frees them both, then tells Miso that there's a kind of spider that's so dangerous, you can't even look at it. He has her close her eyes and hold his hand, and he carefully walks her past the nightmare and out of the house. He takes her home and makes her promise not to go outside alone at night. She informs him that he's going to marry him, but first she asks if he's rich, since her daddy told her to marry a rich man. He says he is, and that his father's company even manufactures her favorite doll, which cements her determination to marry him, he... Young Jun limps away, and when he sees a vision of Auntie standing behind him, he runs as fast as he can. He ends up at the police station and collapses with exhaustion.
He wakes later in the hospital, his parents by his bedside, but he's already suffering flashbacks of his ordeal and sits bolt upright, screaming. Now young June sits by Mi So's hospital bed, thinking about how he would think about her every now and then. His family moved, and when he asked if he could go back to the old neighborhood so he could keep his promise to visit her, he'd learned that it was already being renovated. Ever since then, he was uncomfortable around women, who reminded him of his kidnapper, and cable ties would send him into a panic. Then one day he went to a company dinner, and he recognized me so immediately. She didn't know him, which upset him at first, but then he realized that it was better for him to take the burden of that day alone. He'd hired her as his secretary, but now he thinks, what was I thinking, wanting to keep you by my side? One day, Miso answers the phone when she happens to be in the general affairs office alone, but the caller speaks Japanese, which she doesn't know. Luckily someone arrives to handle the call, and she chastises Miso for being the vice chairman's secretary and not even knowing Japanese. Young Jun overhears her on the phone with Pil Nam later, crying and feeling bad about her lack of education. He gives her a Japanese workbook and says he'll test her every day, and he's so tough that she vows to learn quickly just to escape his hounding. When he finally deems her fluent, he gives her a gift, a Chinese workbook. Ha ha. One night, young June is working late, and he finds me so asleep at her desk. He wakes her and tells her to go home, and when she insists she has to stay and finish some research, he fibs that the project has been delayed. After she leaves, he calls the director in charge of the project and requests that it be delayed. Or, when Young Jun gets a promotion, Miso gives him a keychain that she's cross-stitched to say President Lee Young Jun.